It's hard to imagine that people facing starvation, torture, and murder would somehow be able to create art that would survive more than eight decades to tell the world their personal story of the Holocaust. An exhibit at the United Nations in New York of painters imprisoned in Nazi death camps is drawing visitors from around the world. The message of the artworks is that love and peace is every time stronger as destruction and terror. The art of the Holocaust can teach us a lot. People around the world know that art was created during the Holocaust in ghettos, in forced labor camps. These people found the courage and the strength to create art. It's the brainchild of two groups who were once perpetrator and victim, coming together to create this extraordinary gallery, Yad Vashem in Jerusalem and a museum in Germany. I'm uh, since uh, four years the director of the Center for Persecuted Arts. It is the only museum uh, on this planet who is dedicated especially and only to persecuted art. The art which was um, created in the camps, in the resistance, in the ghettos, and in the hidings. Jürgen Joseph Kaumkutter in Germany and Eliad Morel Rosenberg in Jerusalem are the curators. By creating art, they all expressed their deep commitment to human values. Everything the Nazis wanted to destroy, human dignity, a sense of solidarity, Jewish identity, they were taking great risks in order to create art. They were endangering themselves, but nonetheless, it's a great lesson of, of courage that even their enemies cannot destroy. On the one hand, you see what happened with a person, with a personality under this pressure of persecution. And on the other hand, you see the power of art, the power to survive, and how humans can hold their humanity. Yehuda Bakon was 13 when he was deported from his loving home in the Czech Republic to Auschwitz. He witnessed his father taken to the gas chambers. A year to the day, he drew a portrait of his father rising out of the crematorium smoke as a memorial. Felix Nussbaum, a well-known German artist, was deported to Auschwitz, where he continued to create up until his own murder. You have an emotional witnessing there. It is, it is more than only a description. It, is, it goes much, much more deeper when you uh, view this picture, this, view this artwork. You have the experience that the person is talking to you directly. It's talking to your heart and to your emotions. Other artists in hiding depicted the terror of villagers cowering under the floorboards while stormtroopers hunted them down. Yehuda Bakon was the only member of his family to survive. His art documents his days of starvation and torture to his transformation and return to humanity upon liberation. One of the most impressive facts about this wonderful man an artist is the fact that whenever you meet him, he's smiling. In spite of everything he's been through, uh, and he has experienced the most difficult uh, possible situation because he was in Auschwitz and he uh, saw all of his family uh, being murdered. The Nazis are not longer existing. The artworks of the Nazis uh, when they are existing, they are banned in the deepest parts of archives. But these artworks are on the surface. They are on the top. They, are, they want to be seen, and people want to see these artworks. 85 years ago, it was inconceivable for a Jewish museum to collaborate with a German one. Now both countries are solid working partners, a timely message of hope for the seemingly intractable conflicts of today. Peace and love will win. I'm absolutely sure. We have terrible times. We have, we have had in the last century incredible, terrible times. We, 
we see that we uh, we can speak together the perpetrators and the victims. I hope that all the, the nations who are now enemies see that there is a possibility of peace. And this peace is much, much, much more stronger. If you missed this art show at UN headquarters in New York, you can now see the display on the United Nations website.